So for the past six months, I've been deep into flutter flow. I've learned the basics, I've learned the intermediate, and now I'm advancing deeper in order to build more complex apps, more sophisticated apps, and as well as to teach you guys some of the more interesting concepts of what I feel make Flutterflow one of the best no-code tools out there. But before that, I actually used Adalo for quite a while, building all kinds of apps as well, simple, intermediate, a little bit of advanced apps, build some interesting apps and that. And so after six months, I'm coming back to Adalo, checking it out, seeing if anything has changed, how it feels, and basically comparing my experience with Flutterflow to that of Adalo in order to tell you what it feels like to actually play around with Adalo again, which is actually one of my favorite tools out there. All right, so here we are on Adalo's homepage. Let's go ahead and log in. All right, I'm here logged in. And by the way, I'm using the free plan right now. The paid plan offers you more functionality, which is something we're gonna talk about in just a minute, but this is the free plan. And here I have a bunch of apps that I built. I built more apps, but I deleted them and I'm using a different account as well. And so let's go ahead and try creating a new app so that we can just get a feel for this as compared to Flutterflow. So let's go ahead and do a native mobile app. Uh, we're given templates. This is very, very similar uh, with Flutterflow. So we're going to start with a blank template. We're going to call it a test app. We're going to say create. All right, so we've just created a sample app. And here we have it's like a little uh, skeleton structure. We have the sign up, the login, and the home page. And you do the, you get the same thing essentially with Flutterflow. If you enable authentication, you are gonna have you will have to basically create you know your own sign up and a login from a bunch of existing templates. And you know you have you you can create a home page and all that. And before we continue, I just want to say that Adalo is actually one of my favorite no-code tools out there is just it's elegant it's quick uh it just makes developing certain types of apps a joy okay and i say certain types of apps not all kinds of apps but certain types of apps which you are gonna uh, learn more a little bit later in the video but this is definitely one of my favorite tools all right so before we continue with the ui let's go ahead and take a look at the database and so that we can get a better understanding because everything starts with a database, right? So if we click database here, we have collections, okay? These are database collections and we have one collection called users, which is the same thing with Flutterflow. You turn on um, authentication, you are going to have a user's uh, collection for Fire, uh, Firebase Firestore created. So let's go ahead and create a new collection. Let's say we're building an app about cars and now we can create properties okay so this is like firebase firestore uh you're creating uh collections and properties so let's create another property let's say we have a brand and instead of name we have model and we have a year the year the car came out year and then maybe a price okay so we're gonna say price all right so we have four fields and if we click on here, we can kind of see the data right here. Now, one of the nice things about Adalo is that you see the data, okay? In Flutterflow, you don't have built-in data. It's mostly, you know, it's either you can do API calls or you, you have to integrate with a Firebase Firestore. But here you have built-in data. So we can go ahead and add a car right here. So let's say BMW M3 uh, 2020 price, I don't even know, 50,000, maybe even more. $60,000, click save. All right, so we have one record. Another, another really nice thing about this database is that we can say import CSV and you can drag and drop a CSV file. And you know, to, to, you know, to generate the CSV file, it's very, very simple. If you have Google Sheets, you can simply export a CSV from Microsoft Excel. You can just export the CSV. And so CSV is a universal format. It stands for comma separated values. And so it's really nice that they support it. It makes um, just getting data into the app very, very simple. And so you can start with already generated data. And it's, it's tricky to do it in Flutterflow. You can do it, but it's very, very tricky. You need like an external tool to do it. <clears throat> so it's not as straightforward. And you can also download CSV uh, here. You also have API, but we'll talk about that in just a second. 
And so we have this uh, car collection here. And so this is a big kind of plus to a dollar right here, the ability to kind of, you know, create data and see it. And you can also create relationships. So you can create another collection and create a one to many, a many to many relationship. And that way you can have, let's say a car has many reservations or something, you know, all of that you can do obviously with Flutterflow because it, it supports Firebase Firestore, but it's nice that they've done it in a built-in level like this, kind of like with Bubble. Very, very nice. Now, another thing worth mentioning is that you can connect to external data sources. You can integrate your app's database with external sources like Airtable, Google, or any custom APIs. So you can start a free trial and you can take a look at all of these. But this is part of a paid plan, okay? So you need to uh, you need to upgrade, okay? So you need to be paying a little bit more and you're gonna get your API stuff, right? Google fonts, uh, geolocation, but really the main one is API stuff. They also have custom actions, which is nice, but mainly it's gonna be API since a lot of people are gonna be using it. All right, let's take a look at the UI, okay? The UI is, is typically the UI is where the app is either uh, good, you choose to use it or you know you, you choose another tool and really the UI kind of makes or breaks the tool. So let's say we have our home home screen here. We have various components. So I have a, a, a bar here and I can add a component. I can come in here and I can say, well, let's say I want a simple list. I can just drag and drop it right here. Okay, very, very simple. There's my uh, main uh, page here, right? It has a simple list. And let's say I say this is a list of cars. And now I understand that this list has a lot of these sub elements. Okay. I can go ahead and, and map these, right? Title I can map to car model. Subtitle I can map to, let's say, brand. I can delete subtitle. And now we have car model and car brand. And I also have a left section, which is an avatar in this case, right? So I can map that to an image of the car if I had that, right? I can just select an image, I can upload, I can link it to a URL. I don't have images in the database. So this option is grayed out, but I can also turn it off, all right? So this is all really, really nice. The big difference here is that it's very, very simplified, right? Compared to something like Flutterflow, which is just, you know, Flutterflow is like a, you know, like um, it's, it's at a different level. It's like you're, you're building these things, you're building little components, but here you just drag and drop and you have a list. You don't have to worry about um, drag and dropping a list and then building the components under it, right? So like you have a list and you have a card and you can kind of build out the list yourself. Here you just drag and drop a list. And yes, you have various components, right? You have, you have various components inside the list and you can kind of uh, fix it up. You can add another component and you can even create a custom list, right? So for instance, let's say I delete this. I come in here and I want to add a list, right? I want to go in here and I want to say, let's say I want the list and various lists and I can drag and drop a custom list, right? And what's this going to give me is as close to something like Flutterflow as you can. Still, it's, it's a little awkward because you can come in here and you have all of these components here. So I have a rectangle, I have a title, I have a subtitle. The rectangle is kind of like the container uh, when it comes to Flutterflow, but still these are basically a bunch of components and I can add a component. I can say, well, I want a button, right? So I can come and drag it up here and now this button becomes part of this list. So, you know, they're trying, they're trying to do it, but if I want to like customize this button, I want to create a new button, I'm going to hit a limit, right? I'm going to hit a limit with this fairly quickly, okay? Uh, it's nice for, you know, quickly prototyping the UI. It's nice kind of to do it because I can, I can modify that. I can change what the button says, click me or just click. Let's say I can make it smaller and I can change, you know, I can change the color, you know, whatever, let's say red, nice bright red. And I can also obviously modify these fields so I can insert magic text. And this is similar to kind of like from a variable instead of like, hard-coded, you know, from a variable. And so if I click here, I can add a variable that already exists, right? So for instance, you know, if it understands, right, logged in, I can use a logged in user, which is the authenticated user, or I can say, well, cars, you know, insert this, insert this, insert that. I can also have a formula. And what is a formula? Well, this is a formula 
uh, number format, singular. So this is nowhere near the level of like custom functions in, where, where you can do pretty much anything. So you're kind of, you know, you're limited, right? So I can say, well, I don't want a custom formula. I want to come in here and I want, I want, first I need to specify what this list is of. And as I say cars, once I do that, I can come in here, I can go to my components and I can say, well, this, uh, what do we have? This label here, now car and car, now it understands. So same thing with, with Flutterflow, it, it understands the context, right? It's all about the context. I can say model and then I can say uh, subtitle. I'm going to go to my components, subtitle, and I can say brand, okay? And so we can delete that. And now we have model brand. And now I can actually preview the app. So check this out. I ran the app and it's, okay, I need to log in. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to log in. All right. And now we're seeing one app. We're seeing kind of the result. And so that was very, very quickly, very, very easily. And now we kind of did it. We have a simple list. All right. So none of that like custom components or, you know, cards and all these templates, nothing like that. Although, you know, they have something, they have something, right? There's marketplace, right? We can go to a marketplace and you have various things, but really, you know, you can't turn a dollar into something like Flutterflow. It's not built for that, right? They're, these are completely different apps, completely different methodologies, completely different uh, philosophies, methodologies, et cetera, et cetera. And so, it's so easy to like build a prototype here, right? And I can create a new screen very simply. And, you know, it feels like I'm, I'm playing around with like a toy, right? With like a little toy. Whereas Flutterflow is like, you know, it's like a real car. Here I'm just test driving, like, like riding one of these little kit cars, right? These little small kit cars. Whereas Flutterflow, I'm really, you know, driving like a, you know, a, you know, a big car, a real car, right? And so now I can go to info, I can drag and drop this thing right here. I can say, well, new screen, let's say detail. Okay, now we have a detail screen and now I can come in here. I have a list, I have components. A lot of these components, if you come in here and let's say a component, I can add an action to like, I can attach an action to a component. And which is similar with Flutterflow is that action thing. So I can say, well, let's do a link to our detail. Okay, and now, What's interesting about it, since we did that on a list level, it's automatically going to pass the, the data. So it's automatically going to pass car and car. And you can't really control it. So now you're basically passing in the car and car. So if you come in here, you know, and let's say I want to display, well, this is a better one. Okay, I come in here and this is my app bar. And I say, I want to change the title and title is detail. I want to delete that. And I want to say, well, I have access to car and car and I have access to logged in user. And then I have access to a bunch of like system variables, right? Just uh, the, the whole array, but not even an array. I, can, I have access to count and I have access to count. I don't have access to an array, right? With Flutterflow, you get access to an array if you want. So if you have a situation where you need to pass an array to a custom function to do some logic, you can do that. Where here, uh, I can just use a count, right? Over here. So that's the thing. And so I can come in here, I can delete that and I can say, car and cars model, okay? And that's gonna be the model and then this, you know, we can delete that and we can change it and stuff like that. So it's really great for building quick prototypes and you can even build an app as well. So for instance, we have like, I can duplicate this and I can say, well, this is no longer a car and model. This is gonna be car and model brand. And then I can do that. And this is going to be car and cars uh, year. Okay. So something like this. And now if you run it and pay attention to how fast it loads, right? It, it's a lot faster than Flutterflow. Flutterflow is just very buggy. Like when you create, um, when you run the app, especially with the test environment stuff, very, very buggy. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Whereas here it's very direct. Look at that. And it passes the data from the current model. Whereas for instance, let's say we have a component and let's say we have a button and I want this button to link here. So I can say, well, I can scroll down, add an action. I want to do a link to detail. And now it's not passing anything. It's not passing anything because it's not linked to it. So with Flutterflow, it doesn't pass stuff automatically, right? You need to 
you need to create parameters. You need to say, well, this page is going to be expe expecting some data, what data, and then here you're going to pass that data because this data is going to be available in the list. Whereas here in the button, there's no data available, right? It's not passing anything, right? So, you know, here, look at this. There is a link. If you come here, it, it sends this data to the details uh, screen. It passes current data. But here, I can't pass anything. There's nothing. There's nothing here, right? Because it's not part of a list. And so, you know, this is nice. I understand why they did it. But you're going to have issues if you're trying to design something more complex. I built a Tinder uh, client here, a Tinder clone, uh, like some months ago. And it works, but it was just hacking it left and right i mean you're gonna have it's gonna be it, it, you know you might you might be able to do it but you're gonna be struggling with this but for for building quick prototypes it's just a joy to work with right because like you have a list you can do sorting i can do model a to z i can do maximum items i can create a filter so i have this kind of filter right i can create a custom filter i can i can filter by column which is uh, flutterflow does that uh, provided it only does it if you're getting data from Firestore. It doesn't do it with APIs, just, you know, like for instance, that Bubble does. But here you have, you have filtering, you have all that stuff, you have, you have access to logged in users. So you can manipulate that as well. You can do that. Uh, the only thing about, so for instance, if we come to our data database uh, and we want to add a property, we don't have a way to create like a list of something, right? So if I want to create like a list of something to track on the property, I can't do that, right? Like with a Firestore, you can, you know, with a Firestore, you can create an array of anything. And with a uh, Flutterflow, you can create like a list of something. So I typically create a list and that way I can track, you know, if something was, uh, if something is a part of that list, if it's not part of the list, here you will have to create a relationship to something else. So that's another thing. But still, it's nice to have this internal kind of uh, data, uh, the ability to store data because it's a lot faster than going out to Firebase, Firestore like for, for quick projects. And so this is a great tool and I really, really love this tool. This is my like number one tool for building quick prototypes, building an app that you know maybe I want to show to developers and say, hey, build an app that looks like that and just just be done with it and you know you can build all kinds of interesting apps there but you know you're gonna hit limits a lot faster using Adalo than something like Flutterflow because Flutterflow I can create a custom function that does anything it has access to everything I can create a custom widget that pretty much redefines how a UI element works right I can create a custom widget that does anything so for serious work right there's no substitute for like Flutterflow which is based on Flutter but this is such a fun tool to use. And, you know, I built a bunch of apps here that, that work fine. So it's a fun tool to use. But if I was out there and I was building an app like Tinder, you know, or an, like a serious app or an app like, um, you know, Uber or like Uber Eats or something like that, you know, I would go into Flutterflow. 100%. 100% I would use Flutterflow for like a serious app. You can probably kind of, you know, kind of glue an app together and kind of make it work but you know it's just it's just gonna be it's gonna be challenging but for quick prototypes it's to show somebody hey you know this person clicks this create a new record update a new record this this crud work this is more than enough but anything serious anything more complicated anything with special ui special this special that i'm gonna be using flutterflow and so really really love this tool it feels like i'm like playing playing a game or something, playing like with little Lego pieces or something, such a cool tool. But for serious apps, in my view, in my personal opinion, uh, there is really no substitute, um, you know, than, than a more serious tool like Flutterflow. So that's, that's my experience with this tool. That's my feelings after using Flutterflow for more than six months, building all kinds of apps from simple to intermediate to more advanced those are my experience let me know what your experience is let me know if you like this tool you don't like this tool or maybe you like this better than flutterflow or you have any questions let me know in the comments below would love to hear your opinions your point of view and that is all that i have for you guys hope you enjoyed it check out my patreon page for more content 
and I'll talk to you real, real soon.